Hi YouTube, thought I'd do a short video showing the SBBW047 on by Excel. My first video included the SBBW045, but it was rather poor in picture quality. I thought I have the hang of a thing right now, so I thought, hey, let's do another video of this watch before it leaves my hands. The SBBW047 is a kinetic JDM Japan domestic market scuba diver made wholly out of titanium. It's very light, sturdy. This particular example has a code of 63, meaning that it was manufactured on March 1996. This and its sibling the SBBW 045 were produced, I think, for just a couple of years, really. Back in the day, they had this price of approximately 70,000 yen in Seiko's catalog, which is quite a lot of money back then. Of course, the kinetic technology was all the rage, and the kinetic watches were more expensive compared to automatics, even with the 4S15 movement. Like I said, this particular has a day-date engine, the 5M43, which when fitted with one of the newer lithium-ion capacitors can hold the charge for up to 4 or 5 months approximately. The main point about this watch is, of course, that it's wholly made of titanium, including this beautiful bezel, which has a very nicely polished look. Yes, this is also titanium, this is why it scratches so easily. It's very difficult to find nowadays one example in good cosmetic condition. This is titanium G and titanium alloy, as uh, Seiko says. Titanium G is regular. Grade 5, I think, titanium. The bracelet is made of titanium G. And this has a very nice benefit that you can easily scratch any, that you can easily brush away any scratches with just a scotch bright pad. Unless, of course, it's very deep. In this particular example, the bracelet looks pretty much factory fresh, I guess. It has a dreaded Seiko expansion system. With, I say dreaded because it's an all or nothing system. It only has just one position and that's a bit fiddly. But I guess if you are a diver it's better than nothing. I much prefer the newer Marine Master style clasps. And interestingly enough they were not all that new. Even the SBBW001 had a similar clasp, which allows even micro-adjustments. But the newer models do not. That's the same. I think Seiko did some serious cost-cutting back then. That's not a good thing for the end consumer, but what can you do? Now, the this particular model has... We can clean it up good enough. This particular model has a one-piece titanium case, which is pretty impressive. I mean, you only see it today's Marine Masters. So it's a top loader, meaning that you can only open it from the top. You remove the bezel, up goes the crystal, and then you gain access to the movement. The movement by itself is a very reliable movement. Every kinetic engine since the 5M series have been very reliable. So you're only expected to open it maybe once every 10 years or so to replace a capacitor if it runs out of charge. Particular one, unfortunately, ended up in my hands after a complete overhaul, which was carried out in Japan, but the previous owner had left it in a drawer somewhere, so it does not charge up to its full mark. The bracelet, 
It's a very nice, simple bracelet. Simple bracelets are always the best kind, in my humble opinion. It's brushed completely, as most lots of aficionados like it. Sturdy. The pin and collar system is there for any adjustments. It's very hard to find any additional links for those bracelets nowadays. These are not, the end links are not full, and that's quite to be expected, I suppose, back in 1996, even Rolexes didn't have full end links. Hope it's a good thing that the lugs have, uh, there are some lug holes, you can take those easily off, insert a nice rubber band, a NATO strap, whatever. Now, as I said, the main sticking, main uh, interest in this watch is, of course, the beautiful bezel and this lovely dial. Now, the dial appears blue, but up in close inspection, you may be, may, may be able to see that, in fact, it's a sandpaper-like dial, much like the Grey Ghost has a sandpaper-like dial, only that it's not blue to grey, it's rather blue with some very fine red dots interspersed among the blue. And that's very unique, I haven't seen another Seiko with a dial like this. It's obviously pretty expensive to manufacture, and you can see the how the quality of this dial stands out. The indexes, the hands, the date window. It's all very nicely made. It really is up to its weight category. Very unique looking watch. Obviously it has the precision of a quartz engine and it gives you that benefit of of using a watch that powers with the movement of your own hand, like an automatic. The kinetic engines didn't really catch on. We are back thinking that the pure automatic engines are a better deal, but I guess that once your collection grows larger, you can't really afford to maintain all those automatic engines. Servicing can be very expensive, especially if you keep to the scheduled plan with five year service. And of course, it can be a pain setting the date, setting the time again and again and again if you have a large rotation. And the kinetics is a good solution. They can be easily charged. Seiko had an induction charger out back in the 90s. It's very hard to find those, but you can get it easily charged with an induction brown toothpaste charger. I'm using a Philips Imagel light candle charger. You can charge up to three kinetics at a time, and it's not really fiddly on how you leave it in the charger. That's been very, very handy. I've bought two of those. You can pick them up pretty cheap. Usually they're selling packs where the candles are busted, but the charger works pretty well. You can pick them up for as low as 5 or 10 euros, including post, if you are in Europe. Similarly, if you're in the States. Very unique watts. You can see the polished surfaces on the side, along with the brass surfaces. The crown is unsigned, unfortunately. Again, very finely polished surfaces. Very nicely. Very nice case. Very nice case. Design. The Tsunami log, of course. Nicely etched. It's not laser etched, it's stamped on the case. 
no chip scales here. The power reserve indicator. That's also about a week in this particular example. It just reeks of quality, it's a very nice item. With bezel turns. With a very satisfying click. Exactly like so as you would expect from a watch that's been has been recently serviced. Everything lines up. Beautiful low maintenance watts. Essentially you put a capacitor on and you just wear it for ten or even more years. Really. There's no definite end of life for those capacitors. Anecdotally people have been wearing them for even longer than that. The main thing is really to avoid getting it discharged all the way. Usually if you have extol you can put it on the charger once or twice a month. And that's all really, it doesn't take anything more, very hassle free watch, you pick it up, you wear it, the time is there, it's pretty accurate, specs are about plus or minus 15 seconds per month, you can usually get much better than that, kinetic engines are usually very accurate, I found that the 7L22 usually is the most accurate of all, the kinetic chronograph, and the GMTs are very accurate too. This, I guess it there under about plus or minus five usually seconds per month. So basically you only set the time twice a year if you have daylight saving time change. Fortunately it's not a perpetual calendar. It's a day date calendar with English and Kanji. I'm not really fond of the day date. Um, mostly date only. I still want to see the date because I use it regularly at work and I forget it all the time so I need the date in my watch. The day obviously I don't but I found it pretty cool to have the kanji day in. It reminds you that you are holding a Japanese watch. This is of course a made in Japan example and it was strictly for the Japanese domestic market so there are no examples readily available in the West. I've seen maybe a couple go out for sale on watch forums and the like. But they are so very delicate, especially this bezel. And it's pretty hard to find any spare parts nowadays. So if you happen to have an example which is cosmetically nice, by all means hold on to it if you like it, because there's no telling if you'll ever find another. May well have, you know, I've got... I went on a small kinetic beans last year, got a lot of them. So I'll just hold on to a couple and letting go of others. You can read about the story of those watches in a piece I did for What You Seek and the Greek forum, greekwatchforum.gr with a lot of photos, but I always think a video is worth a thousand pictures, especially if it's a high definition video. I see it on the wrist. Right, so here we have it on my wrist. My wrist is about 18.5 to 19 centimeters in circumference. I'm a tall guy, so it's a pretty wide wrist, it's not a cylindrical wrist. And this watch with 42 millimeters sits very, very well. It's not a very tall watch and it hugs the wrists very nicely. Obviously it's very light. I'd say it's about 110 gram, depending on how many links you fit it. It's an impressive looking watch. The bezel reflects the light very nicely. The dial is obviously quite an eye catcher, along with the gold details. I'd prefer if I had a gold crown as well, but I guess you can't have it all. And it may have been too blinky. 
bracelet does itself very well. It also has some gaps in between, so it's not too warm during summertime. That's a problem I get from some other bracelets. The Sogum's bracelet, for example, is also very light and very nice, but it has no gaps. And this makes it for quite a warm wear experience during the summertime. This is just right. Quite a looker, this watch. Quite a looker. Well, anyway, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this video of this beautiful, beautiful watch. Subscribe for more videos, as I show you a few other pieces of my collection.